Hello aviators, welcome back to The Finer Points. In this video, we're talking about what you call the very first leg of the traffic pattern. Okay, you just lifted off the runway, you're on the extended center line, are you on the upwind, or are you on the departure leg? Hello aviators, my name is Jason Miller, a full-time career flight instructor. On The Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. All right, you guys, I'm just gonna out myself. I call it the upwind. I've always called it the upwind. I've never heard any of my teachers call it anything other than the upwind. Uh, most pilots I hear on the radio call it the upwind. Uh, here's a typical call from me just recently. Nevada County traffic stock, five two one eight five shots upwind, uh, turning left crosswind two five, Nevada County. Okay, and I'm not the only one because I also hear stuff like this on the radio. Where the traffic, there's a upwind, but as time goes on, I have more and more people pointing out to me that the current FAA materials don't call it the upwind, they call it the departure leg. Just recently in one of our CFI club meetings, we had dozens and dozens of CFIs there, and I was pretty certain that when this topic came up, the vast majority of them would have said, sure, yeah, it's the upwind. But that's not the way it went. That room was split about 50-50. I put a call out on Instagram just to see what other people thought. And I got a video like this back. Hey Jason, Sam Terrell here from Hillsboro, Oregon, the Northwest Aeronaut on YouTube. And uh, you struck a nerve here with the departure leg versus upwind leg. So I had to chime in since you asked for videos. Let's take a look at what the documents say. All right, here we got the P-hack. Look at that. We've got our downwind base final and departure leg off the extended center line. Let's take a look at the airplane flying handbook. We have the downwind base final and oh look at that the departure leg let's go over to the aim see what the aim says here we go oh look at that we've got our downwind leg base leg final and our departure leg look at that so how is it that i could be so wrong i mean how is it after more than 20 years of teaching all of a sudden i realize i'm not even saying what the book says I reached out to a couple of my friends in air traffic control. Uh, here's what RH from the, from the great podcast Opposing Bases had to say. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it, and you being an air traffic controller, I'm just curious, what do you call the first leg of the traffic pattern? So there may be a publication out there that shows it called something different, but I have never heard or said anything different from an air traffic side than upwind. All right, well, <laughs> that's good to know. And he's not the only one. I also reached out to my friend Brian Weathers. He's been an air traffic controller for more than 13 years in five different countries. Uh, and here's some of what Brian had to say. But I, I use them interchangeably. Um, so it's not 100% one way or the other. In the tower, majority of the time, it is upwind. Uh, just because that is, we're all on the same page. If I say extend upwind, 99% of the pilots are going to understand that. Your perception though, did I hear you right? It's your perception as a controller that more pilots would understand what you meant if you said upwind. That yeah, Correct. Okay. Correct. So what in the world is going on here? What happened that, that, you know, the majority of pilots out there are calling it the upwind, yet more and more pilots are starting to refer to this as the departure leg. I started to look back through some of my FAA materials. Uh, I went back to the 2007 update of the Airplane Flying Handbook. It says departure leg. Uh, I tried to find the 1997 update. If anyone has it, you can let me know in the comments what you think. Um, but I couldn't find that one. However, I did find my 1980 flight training manual, and there we find some answers. The FAA was clearly calling that extended center line leg of the traffic pattern the upwind. At least they were from 1980 until 1997. So if you guys know what the 97 book says, let me know. But the bottom line is the FAA has changed what they say. To make matters even more confusing, the pilot controller glossary kind of punts the conversation. It makes no mention at all of a departure leg. However, it does say that the upwind is parallel to the runway in the direction of landing. Um, and as one of our CFIs in the CFI club meeting pointed out, you know, even a line one inch off of itself can be parallel to that first line. So without specifying how far the offset is, it leaves things ambiguous. 
So what you have out there is a significant number of pilots that have learned upwind, that call it the upwind, and over time the FAA has changed the materials, some of them but not all of them, to kind of bring in this newer idea of the departure leg. And what they've done really is created a divided world. Your perception though, did I hear you right? It's your perception as a controller that more pilots would understand what you meant if you said upwind. That yeah, Correct. Okay. Correct. Where the majority of pilots out there are calling it the upwind and they're wrong. And there's a growing number of pilots calling it the departure leg and they're correct. So how do we deal with this as pilots? And particularly for me as a flight instructor, I'm, I'm you know, really focused on safety. I mean, this isn't a hill I'm going to die on. Um, I'll do whatever the majority says we should do. Uh, although I will argue in just a moment for why I think upwind is superior. But the bottom line is, and here's what I want you guys to know and take away from this video, is that the world is divided. Not everybody agrees, therefore not everybody is going to have the same situational awareness. When somebody calls upwind, they either mean they're on the extended center line in the traffic pattern, on that first leg of the, of the traffic pattern, or they mean they're flying some leg parallel to the downwind in the opposite direction, on the, what we would call the dead side of the pattern, right? The side where the pattern does not exist. They're either in one of those two locations. Um, if air traffic control specifies that you need to fly into the upwind or join on the upwind, quite honestly, in today's world, I would get them to clarify. I would say, are you referring to the extended center line of the runway or do you want me parallel to the downwind? Honestly, I think the first thing we're doing here is just lifting up the rock, right? Like we're just pulling those. Yeah. Let's just shine some light on this thing because I was actually shocked. I'm an upwind guy. I've always been an upwind guy. I, I don't know. Departure leg feels new to me. Like it feels like something that came out of nowhere. You know, it's like all, really? all of a sudden, yeah. And the aim, like, I mean, I, you know, I haven't, you know, yeah, I've just always heard upwind. I never heard departure leg. Now here's why I think upwind is superior. There's basically three reasons. One is I have trouble thinking of use cases when we have to call that leg, you know, opposite the downwind, anything at all. When are we ever there? If you're doing a midfield downwind entry, you just cross midfield and turn right into the downwind. Uh, if you're going to join on the crosswind, you join on the crosswind. If you're doing a go around, I'm going to specify that I'm offsetting in some direction or another. Anyhow, just assuming that pilots on the, on the frequency need as much information as possible to stay out of my way. So when do we have to call that thing anything at all? Another reason is consistency, upwind, crosswind, downwind. If we're labeling something, consistency makes sense. The other reason is when I'm busy in the airplane with a student, often I'm listening with one ear, I hear the word departure and I assume that aircraft is leaving. We, we, we use it all the time, departure procedures, departing the area, departing the traffic pattern. The idea that we're going to call that first leg of left closed traffic or right closed traffic a departure of anything is nonsensical. But most of the time it's going to be, why did he say departure leg? That's weird. That's dumb. That's not right. Yeah. He meant well, upwind. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, that's the thing is like often, you know, in a, in a training airplane, and I'm sure there's CFIs and students out there that can relate, but I'm super busy, right? Like I've got one ear tuned in to what people are saying on the radio and I've got yeah. the rest of my entire self going, no, 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 dude, you got to like level off. Look, you're a little bit high, get your foot off the rudder. What are you doing on the left rudder? What are you doing? And I'm hearing these calls yeah. on the radio, like while I'm talking. And if I hear someone say a departure leg or whatever, it's possible that in my brain, you know, my student will say like, where's the traffic? And I say, oh, don't worry about it. That guy left. Yeah. You know, that's what I'll hear. I heard departure and I'm like, oh no, no, he left. We're alone now or something like that. Like that is an area of potential confusion, you know, and it, and it wouldn't be the first time the FAA came up with something that's a little bit ridiculous. I mean, for example, how would you say the following end number? Fower tree, fife, fower, niner, fower, tree, fife, fower, niner. I mean, look, some of these things sound great in a boardroom or if you've been, you know, doing nothing but reading the manuals in a closet for the last 10 years. But in reality, some of this stuff doesn't exactly work. Try saying the end number like that on the frequency and I promise you're going to get a say again. So as I mentioned, I, you know, this isn't a hill that I'm going to die on. Um, I'll go whichever way the world wants to go. I think the majority of people right now understand that the extended center line of the runway is the upwind, then there's a crosswind, and then there's a downwind. 
right? And if we say the word departure, we're leaving the area. But I know, I know, I know that that's technically wrong as per the current FAA manuals. Uh, and I know that there's a lot of you out there that think the upwind is some leg opposite the traffic pattern, you know, in the direction of takeoff, opposite the downwind, and you're either on a left upwind or a right upwind. But as long as there's two groups of us out there, we're going to have to figure out a way to be ambidextrous, to understand that some people think of it one way and other people think of it another way. And when air traffic control gives you a directive for the time being, we're probably gonna have to seek clarification. Uh, what we really need here is some, some stern guidance from the top down from the FAA in the form of an advisory circular or something that might actually move the needle uh, because What's happening now is just sort of a slow trickle of change, and really what's happened is we have a divided world. So for you CFIs out there, and for me and my flight training, unfortunately, kind of what we have to do now is prepare people for the reality of two possibilities, right? Don't get locked into any one way of thinking about this. I mean, you might stand up on your soapbox and point to FAA materials and say, I'm right. But at the end of the day, it's not about being right. It's about operating safely. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode. I hope you got something out of that. I hope we can work in the direction toward unity. And I hope in the meantime that we can all understand that on the radio we have to be as clear as possible and that when it comes to the upwind or the departure leg, uh, there are really two camps out there and we're going to have to be very, very explicit if we want others to understand what we're saying and what we're meaning on the radio. All right, you guys, join me on Patreon. There's tons of bonus content there. Uh, you can see the longer versions of the video, uh, the conversations with RH and with Brian Weathers. Also, check those guys out in their respective environments. Thanks to them for jumping on a call with me and trying to work through this. Thanks to all the CFIs in our CFI club. And remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. I'm Jason Miller. You guys are the best fans on the internet. And until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.